All right, so as everybody knows, the bump stock ban got shut down in the Fifth Circuit Court. But what's confusing is, what does that mean for all of us? Like, can we go out and buy bump stocks now? Can we 3D print one off if we want? Not exactly. Uh, what that means is there's a split in the circuit courts. What we would like to see happen from that is the Supreme Court to finally take on the case. They've already denied several bump stock cases. They'd make it up to the Supreme Court, and then they would get shut down. Hopefully with another split in the circuits, they will ultimately take one on. Why do we care about that? Well, the whole bump stock case is surrounded around something called Chevron deference. Long story short, there was a case way back when, like when I was born, and it was an oil company against environmentalists, and the Supreme Court made one of the largest mistakes. It was huge. A large mistake on exactly how courts should rule in a particular case when there is a regulatory agency involved. This mistake was almost as bad as Scalia saying that dangerous and unusual, which comes from an affray, somehow means that there are certain types of firearms that aren't covered by the Second Amendment. Anywho, in that particular case, they had said that regulatory agencies have the power to make decisions if there's a question in the law. So let's say the law says that purple reading cards for hotels are illegal. And then the question comes up, well, blue is kind of an off purple. Does that qualify this as purple? Well, the regulatory agency would make the call. They would say that no, it says purple, so that's what we're gonna stick with. Or they could be like, well, yeah, blue is kind of a purple in a way, especially under the right light, so blue is also illegal. Now, this was supposed to be reserved for minor matters that have no criminal impact. As we know, everything, the ATF can't spit sideways without someone going to prison, getting a $250,000 fine, and spending 10 years in prison. Everything they do has massive legal implications to the whole entire country. Remember, there's more guns in this country than there are people in this country. So basically, everything they do affects everyone. There's no getting around it. Anywho, back in this train up to the Trump era... No pun intended. Um, <laughs> they decided, President Trump and some politicians decided that they didn't like bump stocks. Yes, we understand it cannot ever fit the definition of a machine gun. However, what we would like you to do is find a way, Mr. ATF guys, to shove this circle peg in a square hole because we want bump stocks gone. So the ATF was like, we decree bump stocks are now a machine gun. So overnight, people that were in possession of those were subject to a $250,000 fine and 10 years in a federal pounding the ass prison, which is insane. They effectively made a brand new law because it doesn't fit the definition of a machine gun. It will never fit the definition of a machine gun, but they made a brand new law and applied it to the American people. And we've been going through court systems ever since. Uh, cases would come up. And like I said, they all had great momentum and everything. I don't fully understand why the Supreme Court hasn't taken any of them. But they'd go up to the Supreme Court. We're about to see, you know, this problem get fixed. And then the Supreme Court abandons the case. Hopefully with another split, they will finally be like, okay, okay. It's clear we need to talk here. And then take on the case because there's only one way to rule unless the judge because there even in the fifth circuit there was three dissenting judges which means that those three judges did say yes the atf does have the power to wave a magic wand and create law and just pull it right out of the ass. but you know that that's that's just three the overwhelming majority was like no that that can't happen they don't have that power so yes, it's possible for a Supreme Court judge to be like, yes, they do have that power, but I mean, if they're a good justice and they're following the law the way it is written, no, they do not. They've never had that power. Chevron deference with the ATF is basically nothing because everything they do has legal ramifications. They should not be allowed to even think about Chevron deference. Everything they should do should be written on paper from Congress, signed by the president, because everything they do puts American lives at risk.
It, it's, it's a big deal. And so after, they went and they were like, new law, huzzah! Well, they, they, they got a taste of blood in the water. And just like sharks, they didn't stop after that. So then things just started rolling through the pipe. Next thing they went after is 80% receivers. It's always been clear. It either is or is not a firearm. Cut and dry. If you can put fire control parts in there, that's a firearm. If you can't, that's not a firearm. And then they found the line of where exactly they're, they make that cutoff line as uh, markings on the side for, uh, uh, how did they word it? Basically, like, as long as the inside's filled out and there's no markings or drillings for the fire control parts, that is not a firearm. Well, recently, they're trying to change it again. After years and 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 years of it always being that way, just out of the blue, they're like, oh, you know, Chevron deference, we're changing the law again, which is illegal for them to do. And it gets worse. 80% cans. You can make a homemade silencer. Always been legal. All you have to do is fill out the proper paperwork, send $200 to the ATF, they send you back a, a tax stamp, and you have a silencer. And then it got weird. They're like, well, you know, you got to have the silencer to apply for the tax stamp, but you can't have the silencer without the tax stamp. And, okay, so, you know, we need, we need to find an exception for that, but then... If you already have the parts, is that intent to make a silencer? Uh, well, if you got intent to make a silencer, well, that's still a silencer. So you got to apply for the tax stamp and then get the parts. Then they started asking what parts you wanted to use to make this. So now they're going back to intent and it's just been smashing. And all the company that offered parts so you can make your own silencer, they started getting arrested. They started getting their businesses raided. And for what? They don't have silencers. You cannot screw them on the end of the firearm and shoot a suppressed silent shot. So they decided that the line was, if you're making parts that could be used for a silencer, well, that's a silencer. If you're, <coughs> if you're intending on applying for a tax stamp, well, that's intent. So therefore, you're intending to make a silencer, which is the same thing as actually making a silencer. So that's it. it it's just been a shit show. And they've been flying all this under Chevron difference. So nobody knows what you legally can and can't do aside from going to your gun shop, picking one off the shelf, filling out your tax form, and waiting like a year, sometimes 14 months, for that tax stamp to come back. And now you can finally get it. Right now, like, honestly, that is the only legal way I know to do it. Everything else is in this, you, you can kind of do it right now, maybe. I mean, just apply, and either we'll show up to your house and kick in your door, or you'll get a tax stamp in the mail. So just roll the dice, and we'll decide on that spot what you can and can't do, and that's insane. Every law should be easy, like overwhelmingly easy, for the average person to understand, especially when you're talking about federal law. But I digress. The next one, AP ammunition. They've, they've been dabbling around forever. What is an AP round? I have, for a while there, they had a definition. It was uh, the internal... 80% of the round needed to be softer than the jacket, and the jacket can consist of a bunch of different materials. So that was pretty easy to follow. I mean, that's been flip-flopping now. Is an FMJ considered armor-piercing. <sighs> just, just a shit show. Then, of course, the newest one, well, probably not the newest one because they were just coming out with this crap so incredibly fast, but one of the more newer ones is with FFL. What is a willful violation of a law? Right now, they're trying to say that clerical errors, like you accidentally put a 7 down instead of a 1. Cler clerical error because you put the right number down here, you put the right number down here, you put the right number down here. Oh, but right there... Uh, that 7 really looks like a 1. That's a clerical error. That's a willful violation of the law. Give me your FFL. And that's what we've been dealing with a lot lately. I shouldn't say we. The When I say we, I'm talking about the gun community in general. Like, that, that's a big deal. Now they're taking clerical errors as a willful violation of the law by using Chevron deference to say it is. It, that, that's crazy. 
Another one is schematics or drawings versus the actual part. That's actually what I'm caught up in right now. What is the difference between a fully functioning part and a drawing of the part? Where is the line? When exactly does a drawing or a schematic turn into the part itself? That they're also using Chevron deference as. Nowhere in the GCA or NFA or any of those other places talk about drawings being a regulated piece of material. But yeah, they use Chevron deference and they're like, yep, as a matter of fact, drawings are also an NFA violation. Then another one. What is a pistol? What is a rifle and or shotgun? And that goes into your pistol braces. Uh, Franklin Armory has been having a hell of a time with this because there's not even an avenue for him to apply his designs to because it doesn't fit the definition of a pistol. It doesn't fit the definition of a rifle. It doesn't fit the definition of a shotgun. So what the hell is it? Since it don't fit those definitions, it should not be under any regulations whatsoever because it's something totally new. But they're like, no, no. I'm sorry, dude. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna tell you, we'll get back to you. And if you try to sell these before we get back to you, well, that's 10 years in a federal pounding the ass prison and $250,000 in fine per each item you sell. But we'll get back to you and let you know how to do it legally. That was years ago. They still haven't heard anything back. <coughs> They're finally suing now to try to get some answers, but yeah, Chevron deference there again. They should have looked at the item, been like, well, it doesn't fit any of these regulatory definitions. This is something else. Therefore, the regulations on those particular items that have very specific definitions do not apply to this. But no, nope, they're like, nah, we'll get back to you. And that's the kind of stuff we're facing. That's why the bump stock case is so important. The good news is, even in the Fifth Circuit, they tried to invoke Chevron deference. They're like, we have Chevron deference. We can do this. They're like, the f*** you do. No, you don't. And even if you didn't before, you definitely don't now after the EPA case because they made it very clear. Regulatory agencies need to follow the letter of the law. They cannot veer outside the law. If it's not clearly written in the law, which affects all of these because none of these are, if it's not written down on paper, you need to go to Congress, ask them what they think. Congress needs to have a meeting. They need to vote on it. It needs to be signed by the presidency. They need to do a public announcement. This way everybody knows that the law has changed and then you can enforce it. For example, uh, well, 80% receivers. They changed that law. We still don't actually know where the line is because they haven't been very clear about it. How are people supposed to know? So if I bought this 80% receiver that was legal because I read your opinion letter and you said that was 100% legal, and I threw it in my desk drawer, 10 years down the road, you change your mind on it, and I'm sitting on a felony, just sitting there, right there, no grandfather clause, nothing, that's just an automatic felony, how would I know about it unless I follow gun politics? Nowhere in the law does it say you are required to watch YouTube videos daily to try to keep up with the ATF's new changes. No, they need to make it so the entire public knows about this. They need to go through the complete judicial process to change anything. So if you have like a drawing and now they're trying to say it's the part itself, that needs to go to Congress. They need to vote on it. Then the president needs to sign off on it. And then there needs to be a press release letting everybody know that, hey, drawings themselves are in fact parts. That's about, that, that's, that's insane. You can't do that stuff at midnight have a secret meeting, make a secret document, shove it in a secret desk drawer, and just apply it to people without letting them even know what the document says. How the hell are they supposed to follow the law if they don't even know you changed the law? So anyway, sorry, I kind of went on a rant there. I'm probably going to wind up editing all that out since a lot of it has to do with me. But I do appreciate you watching my videos. If you like to help support the channel, got my Patreon right there. I also have my Shopify store, shop at onlytacticalfans.com. It's where you can buy merchandise directly related to this channel. Anyway, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.